So let's look at chemical equations. Chemical equations um, help us to explain chemical reactions. In a chemical reaction, we have rearrangements of the ways atoms are grouped together. So this is like building with Legos, and you made like two little people, and then you take them apart and you make a tree. Okay, you took the blocks apart and you put them together in a different way. The blocks didn't get changed. You didn't gain any blocks, you didn't lose any blocks, but you just rearranged them, and now you don't have the two little people anymore. You've got a tree. I don't know where that came from, but my mind is a scary place. So the chemical equation is a lot like a math equation. It's just a shorthand way of representing something. So the chemical equation represents the chemical reaction. Instead of an equal sign, we have an arrow. So the things on the left side of the arrow are the reactants. This is where you're starting, and the arrow points where you're going. The reactants react to produce the products. So the reactants are what you start with, and the products are what you end up with. So left side reactants, right side products. Very important to understand that in a chemical reaction, atoms are not created or destroyed. Okay, like building with Legos, the blocks are not destroyed and they're not created. You have whatever you have. So in, in the reaction, since we know that the atoms are not created or destroyed, what ad, whatever atoms were present initially, they must be accounted for somewhere in the products. And sometimes it's not exactly obvious where those atoms went, but if you investigate, you'll find out they're there somewhere. On the, in the equation, we have to have the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the arrow. Yeah, probably, that was probably too fast for you. Same number of each type of atom on both sides of the arrow. So let's look at, um, look at pictures of this. So here we have a chemical equation of uh, methane, which is natural gas, reacting with oxygen. It forms carbon dioxide and water. That's what happens when methane burns. So these are the reactants, and those are the products. And here we have an illustration. This methane molecule has one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms, and the oxygen molecule has two oxygen atoms. So if we count up the pieces that we have, like counting up the Lego bricks, we see that we've got one carbon atom, four hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms to start with. And then if we see, okay, well, they're, they're going to make carbon dioxide and water, the carbon dioxide, each molecule has one carbon and two oxygens. Each water molecule has two hydrogens and one oxygen. And if we add those up, we find out that we have one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens. So is that going to work out? No, because we started out with four hydrogens, and now we have two. What happened to the other two? Did they go under the rug? You know, you're playing with Legos, occasionally you lose some but they're still there somewhere, right? They didn't vanish. And how could we start with two oxygens and end up with three oxygens? Did those two hydrogens change into oxygen? No. The atoms are not changed in, in a chemical reaction. The problem is our description, our equation, is not quite right. And so we need to balance the equation. So here we have... These guys, the carbons were okay. There was one on each side, but we didn't have enough oxygens on this side. So let's put in another oxygen molecule. We can't put in half of one. We have to put in a whole oxygen molecule. That ends up giving us four oxygens and four hydrogens and one carbon. But then over here, originally we had two hydrogens. And now um, we needed more because those, those four that we started out with had to go somewhere. So we'll add another water molecule over here. Now we've got four hydrogens and a total of four oxygens instead of three. And so this explains now 
where these oxygens went. Actually, let's draw lines. It'll be fun. So th this is a really important concept to understand. So this carbon goes right over there, and this oxygen goes here, and this one goes there, and this one goes over <coughs> here, and that one goes over there. Is that funny? That's funny, huh? And so then we've got these two hydrogens, and they're going over here. And these two hydrogens going over here. So everybody's accounted for. So you're starting out with your little Lego things. You take them apart and you have to use all the pieces in the products. So we're not deciding what compounds these things <coughs> form. We do experiments and we determine, oh, it makes carbon dioxide and it makes water. These things are too small. We can't actually see them like Lego bricks. It'd be kind of cool if we could. So we have to adjust our description to match what's actually happening. So when we say, well, let's add another oxygen molecule, we're just doing that to our description of what's happening because we know that if we start out with three, I'm sorry, two oxygen atoms, we can't end up with three oxygen atoms. But we know that those are the products, and so we have to figure out how it's going to work out. That was just a lot of blithering. So we end up with this balanced equation at the bottom. Carbon, uh, sorry, methane, CH4, plus two oxygen molecules. So we figured out that we need two of these guys. CH4 plus two oxygens. So we indicate that we have two oxygen molecules by putting a large number in front. Okay? We call that a coefficient. We don't change the subscript because O2 describes how these molecules are. The oxygen molecules are two oxygens bonded together. We can't just decide, well, we needed four of them, so we're going to make one big molecule that's got four oxygens. That's not how it happens. So there's two of those. We end up with one carbon dioxide molecule and two water molecules. Just tells how many. How many of the unit. The subscript tells what's in the unit. But why did it change <laughs> in the reactant side? Why did it change the reactant side? Let's go back to that. <coughs> nice. Did it not want to go back? It doesn't want to go back. Okay, so our, this is our unbalanced equation. And these formulas um, come about essentially from experiment. You know, we know that the formula of this is CH4, that the molecules are one carbon and four hydrogens, and that oxygen is one of those diatomic elements. As an element by itself, it's O2. And then these are going to react and make two different compounds, carbon dioxide and water. So those formulas are just found out. You're not going to be making those things up in this class. We'll tell you this is what they make, or we'll show you how to predict what they make. And then we have to balance the equation. When we balance the equation, we never change the formulas. You can't change the formula for the compound. You can't say, well, it would be balanced if it was CH4 plus O4. Because that's going to be balanced fine, but it's not going to reflect what it actually is. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, good. I, it just was weird to me that you could go back and add something to your original equation. Right. And, and, and that does seem weird. And it's not actually what we're doing. We're just f trying to figure out how to describe what happened. And our initial attempt with this unbalanced equation when we look at it closer, we recognize, okay, that's not quite accurate. Because that would what, imply that we've got some hydrogens disappearing and some oxygens appearing out of nowhere. And that's not possible. What's the name of the CH4? 
Methane. Methane. Yeah. That's, that's not something you, you will be expected to know. So also in a chemical equation, we sometimes indicate the state, the physical state of the compounds and elements in the equation. And so these are the symbols, and you should know what these mean. They're very cryptic. S is for solid, L is for liquid, and G is for gas. You know, just the first letter. So these are the three states of matter, solid, liquid, gas. And then the fourth one here, AQ, stands for aqueous. Aqueous, that word is a little bit like the Spanish word agua, which means water. Okay, so an aqueous solution just means that you have something that's dissolved in water. Water is, is kind of the universal solvent. Um, a lot of things dissolve in water, and so pretty much everything we're doing in this class is going to be dissolved in water. But it is possible to dissolve things in other liquids besides water. So AQ means that it's dissolved in water. So here are some examples of chemical equations and chemi describing chemical reactions. So in this picture, we have solid potassium. It looks like it's in water, but that's actually an oil to keep it from reacting with the water in the air. So there's solid potassium. So K is the symbol, and S is the um, state symbol, meaning that it's a solid. Potassium, when you mix it with water, here, liquid, so there's the water. When you mix those together, you get a reaction in which hydrogen gas is given off, and you end up with potassium hydroxide that is dissolved in water. So that's the AQ. Now, you see the flames here? So hydrogen gas is flammable, isn't it? Yeah. This is um, a somewhat violent reaction. It generates a lot of heat. It generates so much heat that the hydrogen gas spontaneously ignites. So you put potassium in water. It generates hydrogen and so much heat that it flames. So yes, very cool or very hot, depending on your point of view, I suppose. But that's the description. Now, is that equation an okay equation? Is this balanced? Here, we're starting with one potassium, and we're ending up with one potassium. That's okay. Yeah, we, we've got an extra hydrogen. So here we've got only two hydrogens on the left side. There we've got two on the right side and another one over here. So this is not a balanced chemical equation yet. It's just telling us what is reacting and what's being formed, but it's not balanced. So let's do this exercise, because we're talking about what a, what a balanced equation is, but we haven't, we're not officially learning how to do that yet. So here's an example, an exercise. When blue light shines on a mixture of hydrogen and chlorine gas, the elements react explosively to form gaseous hydrochloric acid. What is the unbalanced equation for this process? So they're asking us to write an equation ke with chemical formulas. What are the reactants and then an arrow and what are the products? So this, um, this ends up being kind of a word problem so we have to look at that, and they, they're typi they typically give you the reactants first and then the products, but not always. Um, words to look for are something like this, react to form. So it's the hydrogen and chlorine gases are reacting. Those are the reactants. And they're forming gaseous hydrochloric acid. And now we're going to use our, our knowledge of nomenclature to write the formulas for these guys. So hydrogen gas, the symbol for hydrogen is an H, right? H. And we're going to need a state symbol. It, what state is the hydrogen in? It's gas. It tells us that. 
If it didn't tell us that, we could look at the periodic table and see that hydrogen is red. That means it's a gas. All the red elements are gases at room temperature. The blue ones are liquids. The, red, the black ones are solids. Is hydrogen a diatomic element? Horses need oats for clear brown eyes, right? Horses, H. Hydrogen is a diatomic element, and this is the sort of situation where you need to know that. So it's H2. That's the formula for hydrogen gas. Reacts with plus gaseous uh, with chlorine gas. Chlorine is Cl. Is chlorine a diatomic element? Chlorine is the clearer in clear brown eyes. So it's Cl2, and that is a gas. They react to form. Move. Um, hydrochloric acid. We just learned about that last week. What's the formula for hydrochloric acid? HCl. Hydrochloric. It doesn't have oxygen in it. So it's from chlorine. Chlorine has a minus one charge, so it's going to have one hydrogen on it. And what's the state symbol for this one? Yeah. Gas. Okay? Why did they do the new name for it and not with the prefixes? Um, because it's named as an acid. So would there be a two in front of that? Well, it's going to need to be balanced, yeah, and if we balance it, we would put a 2 in front of it, and that would solve the problem. But the question didn't ask us to balance it, so we're going to pretend we didn't think of that. Any other questions? So we combine our knowledge of nomenclature to be able to write equations from words, where they give us the names of the compounds and elements, and then we write equations, chemical equations for them. So this one actually was multiple choice, and so we would be choosing, like on an exam, we would choose which one, and so then you need to um, eliminate bad ones. Um, this first one, okay, hydrogen and chlorine, um, that's not chlorine, is it? Okay, so that one's wrong. Get rid of that one right off the bat. Um, the next one has the reactants and products backwards. <coughs> we eliminate that one. And then we get down to these last two. And you, that, you know, seeing these might be a clue. Oh, oh, yeah, there's those diatomic elements. Which ones were those? And so <laughs> hopefully you would choose D. There we go. Right. <coughs> and now we're going to learn how to balance.